Uh, so what I want to do is give you a quick overview of, of InfraWorks and I guess where it fits, um, and, you know, why it exists, why Autodesk um, have it as, as part of the, um, their arsenal. So uh, I'll just quickly roll through uh, this work, this uh, PowerPoint, and then hop in and do some stuff. So InfraWorks, uh, why would I use it? Uh, InfraWorks is about um, bringing context to your project. So if you're working in Civil 3D, uh, you're, you're probably working in isolation in, in an area you need to work in. But there's the whole uh, environment that surrounds your uh, design. Uh, your design may impact on a broader area. So what InfraWorks lets you do is to bring in real world data um, that can come from GIS that you may have. Um, InfraWorks can build some stuff for you and it helps you evaluate how your design sort of fits in. Um, InfraWorks is certainly built um, initially to allow you to do pre-design, so about conceptual design. Um, and InfraWorks allows you very quickly and easily to throw down roads and rail, uh, bridges, tunnels, um, and other infrastructure features. So you can quickly sort of assess um, scenarios. And because it's 3D, it's very visual, people can understand and appreciate that. The third sort of big point that uh, people are using InfraWorks for today is to present some results. So they'll have some detailed design, they'll have contributing design information from Revit users and from other users, and they'll bring all that in into the one place uh, so that their audience, um, the stakeholders can look at it, assess it and understand it together. And really what I want to do is show you um, how to sort of draw information out of Civil 3D to InfraWorks so that you get accurate information, um, but a very uh, quick, fast visual experience that uh, you can easily edit. Okay, um, so InfraWorks is not just for conceptual layouts. Um, I'll let you uh, sort of digest this slide a little uh, while I just talk about it. But the big thing about InfraWorks is that it's part of the building information modeling uh, concept. It's a big data aggregator. So it takes information and visualizes it for you. It understands uh, some of the engineering objects uh, that you would deal with. So InfraWorks is, I guess, engineering intelligence uh, in, in terms of detailing it so that it makes sense from an engineering standpoint. But it also uh, allows you to get to that detailed design and share that data back out. Uh, so you'll see down the bottom, conceptualize, contextualize, optimize, visualize. So, you know, at right at the start of the process and right at the end of the process, InfraWorks is, is useful. So today I want to focus on the visualization side uh, and I apologize for my Americanization of visualization. Uh, so in Civil 3D, this is sort of what you would do. You would uh, get your detailed survey done of the area you're interested in. Uh, you would focus on the design uh, within that area. Now to share that information back to customers, uh, you might try and screenshot out of Civil 3D. If you've got Civil Site Design, you might use Model Viewer to get a, a much more enhanced sort of uh, output view, which will also create long sections and cross sections uh, and, and then try and get people to understand that. Sort of what InfraWorks lets you do is let you take that Civil 3D information and bring it into a much broader environment. Okay, so you can then see that road in context uh, with what else is around. You can then assess that, discuss it with others, um, talk to stakeholders, uh, and they can sort of see where they live or, or how they're going to impact. Uh, when I click the button here, there's going to be a video that runs. I don't know how clean it is at your end, but this is a direct video output from InfraWorks. Okay, so it's very easy to create um, nice video outputs. Uh, you can annotate those and, and describe the information. What I do want to uh, just point to here is that you'll notice that there's very distinct driveways. This is a, a reconstruction project uh, and it, InfraWorks can pretty faithfully take your design out of Civil 3D uh, and embed it in with the built environment. So you can have your detailed information um, sitting in InfraWorks. Okay, uh, so the only other thing to say before I fly out into uh, some live uh, show and tell uh, is to just let you know that InfraWorks is part of the AEC collection. So if you do have the AEC collection, uh, you definitely have uh, access to InfraWorks uh, along with all these other um, nice tools. Um, InfraWorks is a data aggregator. 
in the AEC collection, uh, I'll just say that Navisworks is a data aggregator as well, so I'll take data from the different industries. If I compared the two, Infraworks is about, I guess, selling the project, um, selling the outcome, a visual explanation of what's going on, uh, and Navisworks is about uh, construction sequencing, uh, checking for clashes. So this is more of a sort of industrial strength uh, BIM uh, tool, and this is much more of the visual front end. But what I want to do is show you that it's it's quick and easy uh, to get information into Infraworks. Uh, it's not a big overhead, uh, so if you do have it, uh, it's a very useful companion tool to Civil 3D. Okay. So, uh, moving on, we have here uh, a project. Uh, there's a civil 3D surface, a natural surface. Uh, there's also a collection of alignments. Just to kick off, uh, I do have uh, two roads sort of designed using civil site design. Now, the civil site design isn't core to what I'm talking about today. Uh, I'm just gonna use it to create corridors because I wanna show you how to share your road design information uh, across to Infoworks. Also, I want to show you how to share pipe networks. So, I'm just going to use Civil Site Design to quickly uh, generate that base. But let me talk to you about what Infoworks is and how it works. So, I'm just going to flick to Infoworks, uh, and I should actually hide this right at the bottom, but uh, this is um, Infoworks. So, uh, with Infoworks, you basically create a project. Uh, and you can start from scratch and bring data in. So uh, any GIS data, civil 3D drawings, um, any 3D sort of object data, uh, Revit files can all come in here. What I'm going to do is start um, by getting Infraworks to find some data for me, okay? And that's using this tool called Model Builder. So what Model Builder does is just lets you pick a location and an area. So I'm gonna start where the data is, which is in Mollymook in New South Wales. And my actual data set is here. So what I want to do is, is grab some terrain to get a little bit of spatial awareness of, of where I'm working outside of my exact zone. So what I'm going to do is just sketch the area here. And I give it a name. I tell it the coordinate system, uh, which I'm interested in, in having, um, and then I create the model. So what will happen is uh, Infraworks will go away and gather um, information online that it can uh, about this area, and then create for me terrain data, um, aerial photo, and other features. Okay, and that's gonna take a few minutes. Uh, so that's all cool while it does its thing. Uh, what I'm gonna do is flick back to Civil 3D. So really what I'm interested in doing is to share information uh, back to Infoworks. And there's some very simple um, ways to get your data, which is digitally accurate, out of Civil 3D and into Infoworks. Uh, and first thing I'm gonna do is, is export out this uh, overall property boundary, because I wanna use this to have a visual experience. All right, I wanna use this to highlight that there's a particular area I'm working in. Now, to share data with Infoworks, you can absolutely put this into a drawing file uh, and you can pull that drawing file in and then say, well, this is a coverage area. One of the um, other tools you can take is to create a geospatial file. Okay, so any of you experience with Esri, Esri shapefile, um, those sorts of things can um, be exported out. So what I'm gonna do is just export out this area from Civil 3D. Now I'm very lazy, uh, I just type in the command map export. Okay, you will find this command uh, in the planning and annotation uh, ribbon. Uh, I just type map export because that's what I remember and it's quickest. So um, I'm gonna push uh, data out to a geospatial file and you can pick the sort of file you wanna push out. Now I know Infoworks will take Esri shape files and Autodesk SDF files. Uh, so I'm going to push out an, an STF file. I'm going to call this overall boundary, okay? And we'll say for render, so, so you sort of know what it's for. And I pick this object to come out. So there's one found, but that's the one I want. And I say, look, if it's a polyline, turn it into a polygon so that they can color it in. Now, one thing to know is that when you do push data out, you may have captured um, attribute information, and that 
attribute information can be shared into the file. And InfoWorks can read that. InfoWorks is very well built to deal with uh, geospatial data. But I'm just going to push out that polyline. Um, so I've pushed that out to file. Uh, we're going to go and, and use it. So let me see where InfoWorks is at. So we'll go back to InfoWorks. So MollyMorks actually built. Uh, it's ready to go. So I'm just going to open it up. So I'm going to save this locally. I do have BIM 360, so I could keep it all online. So uh, what it's just doing is um, building that visual uh, environment using the data. So you can see it's um, doing the final download um, back to the InfoWorks system. Just while that's quickly running, I forgot to mention, if you do have any questions, please use the Q&A panel. I said we accept questions, but then didn't tell you where you could do it. So um, if you want to pop any questions in, please avoid using the chat because it's difficult to monitor the Q&A panels there. We already have one question coming anyway. And apologies, apparently some of you may have had problems uh, submitting no on the poll, um, which unfortunately is entirely out of our control. We're not too sure why that happened. Um, but um, yeah, apologies for that. But uh, yeah, feel free to use the Q&A. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Okay, so what we have here is the information that was downloaded um, by just grabbing uh, uh, information online. And what it does is really just gives you context, right? This is the area we're working in, okay? If I flip back to Civil 3D, uh, we, we'll sort of see it's sort of this rectangular area of where I'm designing. And I'm designing a new subdivision uh, in here. So this is InfoWorks. Uh, you can navigate around. Uh, I don't know how quick it is at your end, but at my end it's in instant sort of movement. Um, but I can see that there's some features here that we want to get rid of. So in InfoWorks, um, it is about bringing in data. So if you have a look uh, in the Manage tab, there's a data source button. And it's basically grabbed all this data from online sources. And that's what's driving uh, the presentation of information here. So it understands what roads are, understands what terrain is, understands what a raster image should do, uh, understands coverage areas, which is where you sort of uh, can color in uh, land based on its use. You'll also see some waterways here as well. So all of this information you could edit and play with. Now, I don't want to edit and play with this because this is existing. Now, civil, uh, InfraWorks is all about building options. So what they have is this idea of creating what they call a proposal. And this is a scenario, a design scenario. So this is design scenario one. Now, you always create your proposal first, okay? But what it means is that the master uh, is the original uh, source of information. Now I can click on these roads that came down through InfraWorks and I can remove them. because so I essentially want to replace them with my design. Okay, so I'm just removing the things I don't want. I don't want these buildings, so I'm going to highlight them and I'm going to remove them. Now, one great thing about InfraWorks is that um, it's certainly easy for you to, to click and edit. Okay, so you can make uh, quick graphical changes in here, and I'll show you that later on when we deal with the um, sort of conceptual layout. So, uh, what I've got here is a, is a base, and what I want to do is add. Um, to this using that outline I exported from Civil 3D. So to do that, what I'm going to do is to find the file and drag it into InfoWorks. Okay? Now, what that will do is add it to this data area. And I'm going to do it because it's the quickest, easiest way to get the data in uh, and it will automatically prompt me to configure. But if you want to add any data, so in the, in the data sources area, you just pick the data that you want. So 3D model, uh, civil 3D drawing, IMX file, uh, Revit files, land XML, IFC, raster images, shape files, SDF files, which is sort of the GIS front, uh, can all be brought in. Okay, But one of the uh, cheats way to go is to just drag it in. So I've actually got some GIS files uh, sitting here. And the one that we made is this. And you know, all I need to do is drag and drop it. Okay, and what will happen is it will then prompt me to tell InfraWorks, well, what is it? So in here, 
InfoWorks understands how to render uh, and deal with different types of engineering objects or infrastructure objects. And if we have a look, what I want to do is bring this in as a coverage area. So all I want to do is to color it in, but I could bring it in as a parcel, but I'm going to do that in a moment. So I just go coverage areas. I'm going to say it's in MGA 56, okay, because it needs to understand where it is. And, and back in common, I get to tell it how it should look. So here, and you can add to this, of course, but I'm going to pick uh, grass one, grass, and basically I'm going to render that area with grass, okay? So I'm now sort of looking at that outline. Now while I'm here, I'm going to uh, drag and drop over the property outlines, which I exported uh, earlier. Okay, so I did, I did export those before you saw. Uh, I'm gonna pull those across. Now these were actually created from civil 3D parcels. Uh, okay, so what that actually lets me do is to grab the attributes. So I'm gonna tell the software they're parcels. I'm gonna tell them they should look this way with a nice thick white line. I'm gonna tell them that they're in the current coordinate system. And I could also um, add a, a tooltip, right? So in here, I could say, well, I also want to grab an attribute out of that data. So I want to add the area. Okay, so well, I'll just do that again. What I'm doing is saying I want a tooltip of the area. So once I click close and refresh, it's going to bring that data in. Now, if that data changes, all I need to do is to push out the shape file again uh, and right click here and uh, re-import or, re or refresh uh, and it will um, do its business with that data. But if I click on this, um, InfraWorks will actually tell me the area. Okay, so I know some information straight away uh, because I've thrown a tooltip on that. And in here you can change the uh, visual presentation. Okay, so I could decide that that should be, you know, a blue outline instead of a white. You will note that there's a little bit of anomaly here. I think that might be in the source data, so I'm just going to delete that. Uh, delete it like we would delete um, anything in AutoCAD. Click on it, hit the delete button. Okay, but I've now got sort of an appreciation of how this is going to sort of impact, right? But that's sort of um, just the layout side. Let's um, have a look at the 3D side of things. So I'm just going to flick over to uh, Super 3D again. Okay, so I've got a detailed survey in here, right? The survey was uh, you know, brought in proper accurate survey data. I'd like to use this. I'd like to push this to InfraWorks. And you can do it just by leveraging the inventory. Now, before I do that, what I'm going to do is to uh, do a corridor design because I want to show you how to share that and that you can get really accurate representation of your design straight across the InfraWorks. So to do this, you need to create uh, profiles uh, and corridors, profiles, assemblies, corridors. Uh, I'm gonna short circuit that process that you would do in Civil 3D uh, by doing it through Civil Site Design. So what I'm going to do here, I've already got a couple of roads, but I'm, I've got alignments in here for the internal roads. And I basically wanna turn those into designs uh, that I can leverage. So I'm just going to run uh, auto road creation and quickly uh, turn those into roads. So road one, road two, and road three. Okay, so those roads um, connect vertically and do everything they should do. Uh, so I'm just gonna throw down some curb returns. But there's nothing stopping me from doing a full detailed design um, with variations and all those sorts of changes. Okay, the software will quite happily sort of carry that on and, and work with it. Okay, so uh, what it's done is it's uh, built those curve returns. Uh, what I will do is I'll just review the um, roads here. I'm just gonna quickly uh, simplify the design. Uh, so this one here is uh, pretty outrageous. I'm gonna just gonna delete all my P's here, do a quick design on it. So I'm just going to add a few IPs. Add one here. Yeah. 
and I'll just move this around. Right, not one way, I think. Okay, so um, that's design. Let me just review the others. So this one here, I've got back-to-back -back curves. One thing to know is InfraWorks might not be happy with back-to-back -back curves. Um, part of the reason why I'm going in here and making changes. Uh, again, with this one, I'll just uh, scrap everything. Create a couple of IPs now. Okay, so I've got a design. Uh, I'm going to push this out to corridor. Uh, or should I do a cold sec first? What are we doing for time? All right, I'll throw in a quick cold sec. Just going to do a simple circular cul de sac with a through point. Yeah. Okay, so we'll create the alignment. That looks good. Let's turn that into a string. Okay, so what I've got here is um, something I can use to uh, make a corridor. So I'm going to do that right now. So uh, to make corridor, uh, the, the tool is actually sitting here in the roads tab, uh, but there is a dedicated panel uh, to push uh, simple 3D corridors. So I'm just going to quickly run this out. Road network. Okay, so I'm going to uh, tell it to use the standard subassemblies. Um, basically, this is a configuration that says you find the edge of bitumen, give it this subassembly, you find curb and gutter, give it that one. Um, let me just push this. So um, the, the corridor creation process, depending on uh, how many sections you have, um, might take a couple of minutes, um, but it will make a, a completed corridor. So it's asking me to pop the assembly somewhere. So I'm just going to pop it here. And then it will kick off the corridor process. So what it's going to do is package everything up. It's going to send that information to um, the corridor, uh, and then the corridor will go and deal with that process. So it's doing a modeling now. Uh, it will sort of do this once and then uh, update the cross sections and go again. While that's happening, uh, I'll do another import. I do actually have some outlines for some buildings. Uh, and you'll see it's a shape file, right? And these are just polylines I drew uh, on the plan and uh, basically push them out as a shape file. So if I just drag this in, what I want to do with these is to create some simple buildings. Okay, so I could bring in 3D objects, uh, but what I'm going to do is declare the outlines, these polylines, as buildings. And I give them a roof height, uh, and certainly you could um, set a rule on these uh, or randomize. Uh, and I'm going to just set a presentation for the facade. Uh, I'll go with beetle and I'll do a roof material, which is building, 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 roofing. There we go. I'll go with wood tiles. Okay, so in here again, uh, geolocation. Uh, I do want to drape them on the surface. Uh, they don't have their own elevations, but once I go close and refresh, you know, I've now brought in you know, some more information. Okay, so yes, uh, it looks um, like very standard sort of building shapes, but you could randomize the, the facades, you could um, vary the heights, um, and obviously this is me copying uh, an AutoCAD polyline out and writing out an SDF file. So uh, let's go back and see what Civil 3D is up to. So if it's, uh, Just yeah. while you're getting that um, open, Shane, um, in the chat window, folks, which I said please try and avoid using, but only for questions, I have put a, a copy of the Civil Site Design to Civil 3D Outputs webcast, which goes through what Shane's doing 
um, in basically in more detail, kind of unpacks the tool that Shane's been using to, to provide the, uh, the content uh, to get the corridor created. So um, have a look at the chat and you should see that there's a URL there um, from that recording and feel free to obviously go and watch that if that's, uh, if that's of interest. Thank you, Jonathan. Almost perfect timing there because uh, Super 3, I think, has now made the corridor. Okay, so what we have is a completed corridor. Um, it's all connected uh, and ready to push across. Some of the things just to point out is that there's quite a different cross section on this main road compared to this guy. Uh, for some odd reason, this one didn't make, but I'm just going to push ahead um, past that. Um, what I will do just before I push out. Uh, to Civil 3D is augment this with uh, drainage, right? So let me just quickly wrap out the drainage from here. So I won't spend um, too long on this at all. I'm just going to create a quick uh, Civil 3D pipe network. Okay, let's turn that into a network. All right, so if I just review this quickly, uh, we'll see that there's a design here uh, and I can share this design uh, back to Civil 3D. So just uh, for the sake of some fun, I'll upsize some pipes here. Okay, so to share this back to uh, Civil 3D, all I need to do is to branch sequence it, which is basically just telling it which order to plot. And I'll also set some uh, naming conventions on the pipes and pits. All right, so I'll just push that out as a civil 3D pipe network. Now you do have, again, a, a configuration that you can set up. Uh, and this is all about you telling the system that when you find the civil 3D, civil site design 300 mil diameter pipe, that is the civil 3D part you want to use. Okay, uh, design surface. Uh, all right, where's total model? I should have pumped total model. Okay, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, if you want to see a design surface, it doesn't need to be a civil 3D surface, but this is about just presentation on the long section. Just quickly, Shane, again, uh, for those of you that, um, again, haven't seen this particular feature with the pipes in the chat, I've put the uh, webcast recording for exchanging your pipes to Civil 3D, um, which is obviously part of this process Shane's doing. So feel free to uh, take a look at that as well. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Look, I've just saved this drawing, so I'm, I'm ready, to, ready to make a move. Uh, what I will do is I'll just do a map export on the uh, car park outline. And again, this is just to confirm that it's it's sort of easy to get a nice visual outcome uh, with little effort. I mean, this car park isn't designed at this stage, uh, but what I'm going to do is to represent it uh, in 3D. So if you do um, have polylines, always um, treat them as polygons. That's what you need to push into a, a geospatial file. Uh, while I'm here, I'll also grab these uh, the line marking. I'll show you a bit of a trick with the line marking. So I'm just going to grab all this stuff. Deselect the outline so we have that. And this, this is going to come out as line marking. That's cool. Um, so I'm going to say trace closed. All right. So I'll just output that. All right. Uh, let's have a look at um, pulling this data into InfoWorks. Okay, so a number of things are, are correct in here. So the surface isn't accurate in this area. Uh, we don't have the roads in here, and we don't have the pipes in here. We can remedy that in one hit by pulling in that civil 3D drawing. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is grab that civil 3D drawing. I am doing it, uh, I guess, uh, manually rather than a drag and drop. Um, this is really only because you want to separately configure the different objects. If you do drag and drop it, it's too easy to not do that, and the software will do some default um, display. So I'm bringing the data in. Uh, they will turn up in different areas in here, and then I can choose to display them by configuring them. 
So we'll see this is updating now. Okay, so I'll just take a moment, but what will happen is there'll be an unconfigured item in terrain, unconfigured item in roads. Uh, also, there'll be uh, pipes and pipe connectors um, that you'll see as well uh, in this list. Okay. Uh, while that's happening, I'll just drag in the um, other files. Okay, so if we just find the data exchange folder, um, what did we make? We made lots.sdf. We made line marking car park outline. So if I just drag car park outline in, okay, immediately that's me configure. So I'm going to say, well, this is just a coverage area. MGA 56, and I'm going to say this is a material, and I'll go with terrain, and I'll say this is a gravel car park. Okay, so that's going to pop in. I guess it's popped itself to not configured. Okay. So let me configure the Civil 3D one first. Um, it didn't configure because it was still configuring Civil 3D. So it's going to say this is MJ56. Right, I must have got this wrong. Let me drop that one out all that time. Um, let me just do this again. Pull in that one. I think I might have grabbed the wrong one last time. So it's going to grab that drawing. Right. So should we put that DWG in? I'll just confirm that it's saved. Okay. All right. Let's go back to Infinite. Still call that in. Do you have a note from somebody that I did grab the wrong thing? Yeah. Okay. Shane, was there a possibility you're not picking the Autodesk Civil 3D DWG option, which is too below that? Oh, what a fool am I? Yeah, that, that'd be the problem. That'd be the problem. Uh, look, I'll try and add that now, and then we'll see what it does. I think the problem is this is loading to the cloud. Oh, I don't really want to do that. So I'm trying to do two things at once. Hopefully we'll cancel the other one uh, and do this one instead. So uh, note to self, uh, be careful about the options. Um, you can either grab the drawing for uh, 2D plan information, 3D information, or to collect civil 3D information. So you'll see that the difference here, uh, it's actually picked up because I picked the civil 3D option. There's terrain, there's roads, there's pipes. Now this might, yeah, it has added, which is great. Okay, so I can see these data sources here. First thing I'm going to do is, is make the surface happen. So I double click on the surface here, and I, the only configuration I need to do is to tell it um, the zone. Having done that though, um, you also need to, and it normally prompts you, um, you need to go into the surface um, layer manager here and you need to drag this down into the ground surface. This is the way you paste, okay? So once they're the same surface, they'll paste on top of each other. If you don't do this, they're considered separate surfaces. What you will see is um, that the land is sort of flattened out. There is a bit of a schism, so uh, obviously the original data is quite different uh, in some parts to the uh, detailed design, um, but we now have our detailed sort of design elevations happening here. Let's configure the other parts. Uh, so I just come into the roads, double click on the road entry here, uh, and I just need to then define 
how this should come together. And this is uh, new. So um, if you have done this, um, let's say six, 12 months ago, um, the options weren't here to properly render out uh, exactly what you've designed. So every alignment is an opportunity for me to create what's called a component row, which is where InfoWorks does the cross-section and rendering. Uh, I'm gonna untick those. The ones that are actual road networks in Civil 3D, I can actually bring them across as corridor component roads. And basically InfoWorks will build cross-sections based on the design information, okay? So they're all the ones that I wanna bring in. Now, in terms of um, how you map that across, um, there's a component mapping tool. Now, what this is talking about, it's basically saying if there's a sub-assembly with the name link in it, uh, it's going to get this material assigned. If there's a sub-assembly with the name lane in it and it's got a shape code of pavement one, then it's going to get this material. So what you need to do is look at your corridor, look at the assemblies or sub-assemblies applied and see what the names of the shapes are, what the names of the sub-assemblies are because this is the hit list that's going to render the materials. So if I don't want the links, uh, which is the ones that are happening for the footpath and, and the uh, verge, if I don't want them to be bright green, you know, I could come in here and pick a different material, right? So um, I might do it post. Let's come up into materials and land cover and I'll do manicured grass. So um, that is the reason why you're gonna get a, a nice render output. And you can make your own, uh, you can add to this uh, and you can export them out to file and import them in. So if you use your own codes, your own shapes, uh, your own sub-assemblies, it's not hard to configure. So MGA56, close and refresh. So what it's doing now is it's bringing those roads in. Uh, as I say, it's a, gonna be a pretty faithful recording of what you've designed. Now the important thing to know is that with InfraWorks it's reading the data. So I can right click on the entry in the data connection and I can re-import it. Okay, so I can update based on what happens to the design um, in Civil 3D. But we've now got our roads in here. Um, this one was a rural road with a table drain. And then we've got um, our other roads going on um, and all the connections happening. Now with the uh, these roads here, they won't, they won't connect to the um, design that you've done um, as an intersection, um, but you can certainly bring them up nice and close. So that is how you bring the data in. Um, and if you look at it, it's really brought out exactly what you've uh, designed. Okay? So, and I, I repeat, uh, updating is just a matter of uh, right-clicking in here and choosing re-import. So what I'm going to do is bring in the pipelines. Um, so I double click on this pipeline connection, which are the, the, the structures or the pits. And I'm just going to say MJ56. And you'll see in here that the uh, software is letting you pick each pit to bring in by its number. And in here, it's uh, automatically finding the height and assigning some of the features um, from the drawing. And if I double click on pipelines, I can do the same thing here. Again, this is um, automatically going to get the size information right. So if I have a bit of a look underneath this model, I'll be able to see here the pipes and uh, the pits. Okay, now um, using this information, sharing this information, uh, you can push it out. Um, using a number of methods. So if we'll just look at the presentation share, you can export out a 3D model, an IMX, which goes back to Civil 3D, uh, and there's also a direct connection to a, an ArcGIS system. Okay, so there are ways to, to share this data out. Uh, it, it will certainly take in um, other information um, from Revit and, and share back. Now, uh, just in terms of the road design here, if you wanna have a quick look at it, uh, this will give you an idea about what InfraWorks would do from a conceptual design point. Um, these are the design um, elements that I use to create the corridor. When I look top down, I've got grips. Now, 
it won't let me use the groups because it knows where the data came from. But when I right click on this, I can certainly show uh, a profile view of this. And if you've got uh, the ability to, you can drag these um, up and down if it's a conceptual road. And you'll see here that there's a, a sort of tracker along here that's, that's rolling along uh, the vertical uh, and in the model. If I right click again and say show station, uh, then I can see that this is uh, a good rendition of that design, okay, section by section. Okay, um, other things we can do here, uh, did I push the car park stuff? I think I did and then uh, I have my little moment of picking the wrong thing. Uh, let me just pull that car park out on in. So I'm going to say that that's a coverage area. I'm going to say that that is NJ56. And I'm going to give it um, just asphalt or gravel. So with the coverage area, it doesn't change the elevations. Um, it just changes the, uh, the render. Now, interestingly, it's maybe a couple of things this one. Let me just see what I did. I uh, probably forgot to tell it to Drake. Right? Is it Drake? In the material. Should be good. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to have a quick look at my layers. So um, everything has a layer control, uh, and you want that layer at the top, which it is. Okay, um, I will leave that alone. I want to show you the line marking, but um, that, that maybe the selection was wrong. Let me just go back to single thread L. You're going to push it and make it work. Okay, so my problem might be that that's not closed. That's my fault. Um, so I'm going to map export this. So if you're going to um, export a, a polygon, it has to be a closed polygon. Close this time, I'll call it. I'll just select that and I'll just export it again. All right, so back to InfoX. Grab my, I'll call it close this time. Okay. All right, so I'll say it's coverage area. I'm going to say I want this to be in 56 Straight. And there it is. Did I pick the wrong material? Let's go and give it a material. I obviously forgot to give, give it a material. Okay, so look, it's um, quick uh, and easy to do. I'll just bring in that line marking. I'll show you a bit of a trick there on the line marking. So the line marking, uh, is brought out, um, but they're not closed. I'm going to call them coverage areas, but as you saw before, uh, if it's not closed, you don't get a coverage area. But the cool thing is, if you go to the um, source of information, like the table of information, if you put a buffer on it, then it's going to put a thickness on every line, even if it's not closed. Okay, so what should happen is I should get some nice uh, line marking in here now. Now, the color is not great. Um, that's on me. Uh, let's see if we can that. I'll just give this a style of a white color. Okay, move polyline around, um, re import. Um, you can update really quickly uh, and easily. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is talk to you about um, output and then I'll roll back to uh, concept design. Uh, I did want to add a, an extra road in Simple 3D and pull that in just to, to prove it's all dynamic, um, but time's not permitting that. Um, so just in terms of, of publication, of, of making outputs, it's easy for you to uh, sort of drop in um, different options for output. One is a snapshot. Uh, I just want to talk to you about the storyboard creator because it's really easy uh, to make a really nice looking visual with uh, InfoWorks. So 
I'll just show you sort of how that would go. So all you do is you find a place where you're happy with the look and you then capture that information. So this is a storyboard credits. So this is you creating a 3D visual. Okay, and you can create as many as you want. So I'm going to call this one, I'm going to give it a name, I'm going to call it Overview. And to basically create uh, an animated scene, what you do is you use one of these options. Okay, so you could grab a, a road and run along the road. I'm going to use this Add Camera Path Animation. So basically what it does, it takes a snapshot of this location and it then allows me to do a speed from this point or from this view to another view. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to spin around 180 degrees and I click on this plus and what I've now got is a transition. Right? I'm going to click on play it transitions over that distance right from one view to the other. Then all I'm going to do is zoom in I click on the plus again so that's a, a sort of snap point and then I'll spin across to the uh, left and I'll zoom in on the roads here and what I'm going to do is click on the plus there. Now I think this is my fault because I didn't pick a uh, total model surface for the uh, elevations of the pits. Um, now when I click on play here you might not appreciate this but it's going way too fast. So it's actually really easy for you to change the speeds. When you click on one of these um, snapshots you took you can actually change the time from one snapshot to the next, or the speed. So I'm going to say it's going to take five seconds uh, to go from that snapshot to the next. So when I click on play, it's a much slower walk down. Okay, so I'm, I'm not suffering vertigo as I go through. Now, you can also um, get to a point and put a waiting time on. Right? So you might want to wait uh, in a spot for a certain amount of time. So if I click on play, it's a quick spin, then it slows down. It wanders me down to the scene, then I stop there for a moment, and then I move to the next cutscene. Okay, so it's really easy for you to sort of configure and arrange these things. If you want to uh, add a, a caption, some sort of description or a title, you, you find the place where you want to be with the, the dragon here, click on add caption, so drag that where you want it to be. There's my caption up the top here, and I can write whatever I want. So, thanks for attending. Right, so you can basically put uh, descriptive information in here, um, and uh, that will sort of roll out and describe to people what's going on um, as you get your focus onto different areas. Uh, the last thing I'll add in here is uh, sun and shade. You may not um, have noticed, but every 3D entity here casts a shadow. Uh, and this does um, relate back to day of year, time of year, um, and the time of day. So I'm going to add basically a, an animation here for uh, date and time. So that's going to happen at, at the end. Uh, it's sort of going to go to a different view. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have done it with that view. Maybe I should do it when we're down here. So I'll delete this. Right here we delete, and I'll add it again. So what I'm going to do with the sun and sky here, it says time of day. So I'm going to start it at 7 a.m. and I'm going to finish it at 5 p.m. or 4 p.m., somewhere around there. Right? So when I hit play, what we'll notice is that it then walks through the time of day. Okay? Now, if I don't want that sort of really abrupt change, uh, I might actually decide that this shouldn't be, or this one here shouldn't be a cut, it should be fade from black. So what happens when I hit play? is it fades to black and then it does um, this um, time zone change. So you could keep that time or that could be your default time, um, but it's an opportunity for you to sort of show different information, not just a, a visual move, but also a time move. Now, with regards to uh, publication, uh, all I do here is I click on this button to make a recording. Now, it's up to you how you want to do this. Uncompressed video is going to be perfect, full fidelity, but quite large. Uh, Windows Media Video, MJ, MJP compressor. I'm going to use the Windows Media Video option. Uh, I'm just going to call this one uh, my vid. And I'm going to use the viewport resolution. So it's going to be this sort of wide 
Okay, but you could set a screen resolution to go with. When I click on record, it's going to go away and create that video for me. All right, so uh, this is just a quick JPEG. Well, it says quick, it's going to take a couple of minutes to make it fix. Um, but it's now churning out a video. So it's really easy for you to create um, visual experience with um, this digital accuracy. Uh, I want to show you just uh, quickly. Uh, once this is done for a couple of minutes on uh, conceptual design uh, and also just to quickly point you out to the measuring tools. So it's, uh, it's nearly getting there. Uh, Jonathan, are there any questions so far? No, it's still quite very, very quiet. Um, so uh, yeah, if you do have anything, I was going to run a couple of polls actually regarding um, some of the Civil site designed civil 3D outputs, but uh, I'm able to save those for another time. But yeah. Uh, yeah, still still quiet. So if you do have any questions, folks, as we're getting close to the end, uh, feel free to drop them in. Just in terms of uh, talking about that sort of engineering experience, you can set up your own view, and basically uh, the engineering view, which is the default one, shows contours and also puts a sort of fade on things, so you can sort of see through. Um, as you might see here, um, some of the underground pipes. Uh, Y-frame would be just a pure Y-frame view. So you can actually uh, pick and choose um, what you do in terms of that, that sort of visual style. Let's close the story one. So um, just in terms of conceptual, let me do a couple of conceptual things. Uh, so what I'm going to do is to go to the Create tab. This is where you can create uh, conceptual designs. I'm going to start with this component road, and I'm just going to show you that you know you could throw down a, a sort of quick road to, to talk to people about. So I'm just going to change this to a four-lane divided road with Jersey Barrier. I won't really try and connect on the intersection there, but uh, I'm just going to run that down. So you just click and run through where you want your sort of design to go. Now. This road here I can connect to if it's a component road, um, so I might change that in a moment. But here's a quick uh, road design, conceptually thrown down um, to look at and talk about. Now I can see the uh, potential for a bridge here. What I'm going to do is to show the, the profile view. So you can add and remove uh, profiles here, uh, but what I'm going to do is just create a rise here so that um, it does insinuate we should, we should have a bridge. Um, and then I'll, I'll talk about the bridge side. But yeah, you can um, add vertical curves where you want, um, and you can push uh, change in here. It's like a, a quick sort of test um, discussion with people, right? But it is pushing out um, a design as we go. Now, in terms of the, the batters, uh, it says here that it's fixed slope, um, and it only goes to 10 meters. So this is why they cut short, and you've got these vertical walls. Um, but if I expand that out, you'll see that, you know, it now goes further. Now, it's obvious to me we should have a bridge here. Um, so what's cool is when you click on a component road, highlights that road. Uh, if you click again, you'll get to the individual aspects. So you can actually edit the pavement or the, the grading left and right. But if I right click, I can add a structure directly here. So I'm just going to pop a bridge here. Better do it where the, uh, where the water is. So what's happening is InfraWorks is going away, um, looking at um, what's required for a bridge. Um, very configurable um, once it's made, um, and we'll try and sort of update uh, beam sizes, pier locations, um, based on how long it is, um, sort of its start and its end. So that has thrown in a uh, bridge. Okay, it's probably either putting, it should be putting supports in now. You see them, them dumping in. Okay, now you can grab those supports and move them. Uh, if you just click on the road, you'll be able to see, click on the bridge, you'll be able to see that, that roll bar, and it's very easy for me to stretch that bridge out and make it longer. Uh, you move the road, um, you'll move the bridge. So uh, that's sort of a little bit on uh, the conceptual stuff. Um, some of the, the lighter things, you know, you might want to grade an area. So you might want to sort of see what a flat pad looks like in here. So you can create um, a graded pad. Uh, and basically that has uh, a render material that you can set for it. 
uh, you can also set uh, the grading you want. So in here, there's a, a style and you can basically default um, some batter slopes right, by picking a style. So you see here, I've done a three to one um, batter slope and I've now got um, you know, this sort of pad and I can drag it around and, and sort of see uh, where it's gonna go. Now, uh, if you wanna know the volume, the, the trick is to run the measuring tools. So uh, there's some really cool measuring tools in here, but terrain statistics is what you want. All you do is you sketch around that area, double click, and it will then tell you the uh, terrain information. Right? Um, and that information, um, you know, you can get back to and, and check out at any time. So it's a little bit about uh, sort of conceptual layout. There's um, standard trees, rows of trees, you can throw down rivers, water areas. It's about sketching um, some scenarios. These um, elevation changes, this road can go back to Civil 3D. Uh, you basically run an IMX and it will push back a profile alignment corridor. It will push back a, a change in the terrain here um, as, a, as a surface. So that's sort of the, the, the share back. Um, one other cool tool uh, is if you go to analyze, um, Couple of cool tools. This one I won't run, but you can do a traffic simulation, run some cars, um, you can even run people in the scene. Uh, what I am going to do is, is run this watershed tool because I think it's cool. So with the watershed, you can pick a road and it finds a low point, works out the watershed to it. But I'm just going to pick a random point out here. And you, you've got some spacing controls, but I press enter uh, and then it will calculate uh, the watershed. So it's basically you pick a spot and it works out the, um, the, the water catchment to that area. And all you need to do is to click on it, it will tell you the area and all the bits and pieces about uh, That does lead to other things in InfoWorks about uh, creating drainage systems uh, based on the design. So there is a catchment area. Okay, so um, we went on a, a bit of a wander. Apologies for my uh, stumbling on not closing polylines uh, and picking the wrong things. Um, there are lots of different uh, sources of data you can bring into InfraWorks. Uh, it's very easy to change the way things look um, by just dragging and dropping um, from a style palette or changing the materials. Um, and yeah, you can sort of share this information and make some, some pretty nice sort of visuals. Now, I did talk about um, optioneering um, or, or proposals. If you have a look, uh, there is only one scenario. I should have made a second one before I made this bridge, but if I go back to the master proposal, the first proposal, what you'll see is that everything we've made disappears. So you can basically flick uh, between one proposal and another. So this is what it was. And if I go back to my other proposal, then you'll see this is what it is. Okay, um, well, I am over time. Uh, so I think what I'll do is I'll hand back to uh, Jonathan. Thanks, Shane. We did have um, one question uh, just popping from Andrew uh, regarding how well does it handle point cloud data? Then that, that's something we can quickly uh, sort of answer. Look, it, it handles it. Um, well, it, yeah, my experience is it handles it really well. It's it's fast uh, and quick, uh, like Recap is. So if you use Recap, it's probably a, a benchmark for you know, how long things take. Um, you can directly pull in a point cloud and it. It processes it or you can bring in a recap um, RCP file. Um, now some of the things to know about point clouds is in InfraWorks you can skin the point cloud and you can start doing feature extraction. So one of the things that surveyors are confronted with with a point cloud is they've got this massive amount of data but then they want to simplify it to well, where are the break lines, uh, where is the center line, where is the invert, uh, you know, where's the top of the curb. Uh, in InfraWorks, they do have the ability for you to bring in a point cloud and skin it. It will interpret uh, features like trees and signs that you can 
confirm a right or wrong, but it will also do feature line extraction. So it will find, uh, basically you pick a, a point on the cloud and it chases that, that feature to see um, if there is a, a ridge happening through those, those cloud points. Um, I, I think that would be probably, what I've just mentioned is probably a, a survey discussion um, and potentially a, a webcast that potentially Jack could do, um, our, our survey application specialist in the future. Fantastic. Um, so look, we've got, um, just before we close off, um, we've got a few other, a couple of other web, webcasts left for the rest of this year, um, namely road, right, road widening, I knew I was going to do that, road widening with civil site design, followed by um, civil 3D sections and section views to kind of uh, finish off 2020. Um, if you are interested in getting hold of any of our recordings, um, they're all available on our YouTube channel. And if you want to uh, get hold of our newsletter where you can get told about these webcasts, um, feel free to go to the uh, link here, which is related to um, subscription. Um, other than that, we hope, uh, hopefully we'll catch up with uh, as many of you as possible next week for the road winding uh, webcast. And we hope you have a very good week. Thanks very much. And thanks, Shane. Thanks, everyone.